because I wanted to publicly thank him and the Lowndes County uh, Historical Museum, which if you don't realize is a real treasure. I'm a real hog for uh, old maps uh, because they can tell us so much and Donald has the old maps, so they're just great. Uh, I'd also like finish up with sort of some of the threats to the river, current threats to the river, and get into hopefully a good discussion on those types of things and so on. So, Angel, if you'd like to. Let's put the Withlacoochee River in a bit of perspective. Uh, and if we could dim the lights a little bit more, uh, maybe it could uh, see this a bit. Depending on which reference you read, the Withlacoochee River, I'm going to stop right here. You do understand there are two Withlacoochee Rivers, right? There's one in central Florida, uh, flows out of the Green Swamp and feeds into the Gulf of Mexico. If any of you Google Withlacoochee River, you're, most of the hits you're going to find are the other Withlacoochee. If you're doing any research on the Withlacoochee River, be very careful what you're reading. Um, this is, for lack of a better term, often called the Upper Withlacoochee or the North Withlacoochee. Depending on the reference you use, it is either 110 miles long, 105 miles long, or 106 miles long. 70 miles in Georgia, 36 miles in Florida. The watershed uh, looks like a Y, and it makes up up here in Kiff County with a stream that flows out of Saps Lake, as well as a variety of little streams and rivulets that coalesce south of the delightfully named little towns of Enigma and Alapaha, and start flowing south. At Nashville, you can pretty much walk across it. The, well, with the droughts we've been having, you can pretty well walk across it all the way down in many places, but we'll talk a lot about average years uh, here. The new river adds substantially to it. That comes down. This is the Withlacoochee right here. The new river comes in, and at that point, we can really give it the name of a river. What isn't shown here is the Little River comes right down through here in the middle of this Y and flows into the Withlacoochee right here. Truly, with the Little River flowing into the Withlacoochee at that point, you can pretty much in any year always kayak it from Truthville, that point, all the way down to the Suwannee River. The Withlacoochee, this Withlacoochee, is a tributary of the Swanee River. And of course, this doesn't show down in Florida. It is the dividing line between Hamilton and Madison County and flows into the Swanee. The Withlacoochee watershed is 2,290 square miles. 
uh, drains that big an area. Now, figures like that, I don't know about you, but don't mean a whole lot to me. But that's larger than the state of Delaware. Not that Delaware is that big. It's twice as big as the state of Rhode Island. Nevertheless, if we think about that this is an area that on average, we haven't seen average years in a few years now, but on average receives 50 inches of rain a year. Now, an area that's draining 2,290 or the size of bigger than the state of Delaware with 50 inches of rain a year, this should be a formidable river. And sometimes it is. Uh, some, as Donald alluded to, some pretty dramatic floods on this river. Why it isn't always a rampaging river has to do with the lime rock underbase that it's flowing through. The Florida aquifer that it flows through cuts down deeply into as it goes into Florida. The aquifer and the river are basically the same thing. When the river is full, the springs flow backwards. In the water flows into the springs, and of course, normal times, we have a nice, beautiful spring that's emptying the aquifer and so on. So that's why we don't have this huge river all the time. Um, to compare it to other rivers, if we get down here, down into Florida, Pineta Gauging Station, uh, it has a uh, flow of about 1,100, um, no, 1,700 cubic feet per second. Below Panetta is sort of spring world. You've got all the big springs down below that. Madison Blue Springs, several second magnitude springs, and so on. So by the time it reaches the Swanee, it's probably at least about, conservatively, maybe 2,000 cubic feet per second. To give put that in comparison, Florida's largest river, the Apalachicola, which is really the Chattahoochee Flint Apalachicola system, is close to 25,000 cubic feet per second. The Suwannee itself is about 10,000 uh, cubic feet per second. So by any measure, this still remains a little river. Um, nevertheless, it contributes about 16% to the flow of the Suwannee in any given year. Uh, so does the Alapaha and the Santa Fe, two other tributaries. So 16% to the Suwannee is still a major contribution coming into the Suwannee and so forth. Um, the question I had to geologists, archaeologists, and so forth is when did this become a river? Who were the first people to see this as a river? Uh, when the first people came here, was there a river here? So, if we could advance, Angel. 